Hello everybody and welcome back to the Golang tutorial. So in this video what we're going to do is talk about slices. Now slices are kind of like an addition to arrays. Um, they implement some functionality and fix some problems that we would have with standard arrays. And the most common example of a problem that they solve for us is that with standard arrays we need to determine the size of that array and pick the size of it right when we create it. Now this is a problem because sometimes we don't know how many elements are going to be in the array. Maybe we'll be adding things in the future, removing things later on. So it's really difficult to pick how big the array should be. So in this case, what slices let us do is take portions of an array, which we'll see in a second, and also define the fact that, hey, we don't know how big this slice is going to be um, until we get it or something like that. And it will actually allow us to change the size of the slices as we add new elements in, remove new elements, all of that. We'll see that as we go through, but I just wanted to uh, give you an overview of what slices really do for us. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard here and I want to start explaining slices by really illustrating to you how uh, arrays work in Golang. Now this is important because if you don't understand how arrays are represented, then slices are going to be even more difficult to understand. Uh, so I'm just going to go through that here. Okay, so let me say that I draw an array here. Uh, we'll just say that this has four elements inside. So it's length four. Um, the first index here we know is zero. So zero, one, two, three. Let's say this has a bunch of numbers in it. So like zero, three, six, nine, we'll just count it by three. And this is our array. Now, the way that arrays are actually represented in Golang is by three things. We have what's known as a pointer, which is simply the location of the first element in the array. And then we have what's known as a length, which is simply the size of the array. And we have a capacity, which is always the same as the length. So the pointer points to the first element in the array. The length and the capacity are just some digit that tell us how many elements are in the array. So in this case, it tells us four. Now, the reason these are the only things we need is because if we know the location of the first element in the array, to get the other elements in the array, all we have to do is kind of move to the right and move to the right and move to the right all the way up until we hit the length of the array and we can access all of those elements. So if we access index two, all we need to do is add the value two to whatever the location of the first element is and we can easily grab that element. So I hope that makes sense, but just understand we have a pointer, a length and the capacity and the length and the capacity are always the same. Whereas the length is telling us how many elements and the capacity is telling us the maximum amount of elements we could have. Um, so that is how arrays are represented and kind of work in Golang. Very important to remember length and capacity always the same for arrays. Okay. So now we're going to move on to slices. So actually I should probably should have left that array there, uh, but let me draw this array again. I'm going to talk to you about what slices are. So a slice is really a portion of an array. So in this case, we could say that this box that I've just drawn here is a slice of this underlying array. Now slices are their own data type in Golang. They're different than arrays, but they kind of work on top of arrays as we're seeing here. So how we represent a slice is the exact same way that we represent an array, except there's one thing that's different. So we have a pointer, which tells us the location of the first element in the slice. And this location is actually going to be um, the location of whatever element is in that underlying array. Now, I know this seems weird, um, but like if the slice started here, then the pointer would be the same as what represented that underlying array. Hopefully that makes sense. But anyways, a pointer to the location of the first element in the slice. And then we have what's known as a length and a capacity. Okay, so it's hard to write small with this pen, but hopefully you guys can read that all right. So the length and the capacity for a slice are actually different. The length is the same thing that we saw in arrays. It's the number of elements in the slice. So in this case, the length would be two because we have two elements, the six and the three. But the capacity is actually how many elements we could have. In this case, it would be three because if we start with the slice at this position, six, then we actually could have a length of three if we decided to extend the slice out by one more element. So that is kind of what we mean by capacity. It's how many elements are left at the end um, from the very beginning that we could have in the array, right? So if I put this now to 12, then the capacity would change to four. So that is what we mean by capacity, how many kind of extra elements uh, or I guess how many elements after that first pointer. So in this case, there's four, uh, but if we remove 12, then obviously we go back down to three. 
So I'm hoping that makes sense, but that is the difference between a slice and an array. And I'm going to show you how we make slices now and, and how those work, but just understand that they are portions of an array and the length and the capacity is an important thing to understand because if we take a slice, something like this, what we can actually do is what's known as re-slice it and extend the slice to um, have up to the length of the capacity elements inside of it. So if we start with length two, but the capacity is four, I could re-slice this slice. So I could actually take a slice of this slice uh, to extend it by a few elements. Um, so hopefully that's making sense, but let me put away the whiteboard and then we'll get into coding. Okay, so let's actually get to coding now. So you see I've created an array. This is an array of length five. It also has capacity five and contains these elements. Now I'm going to show you how we can take slices of this array and show you what the slice operator is and how that works in this program. So keep in mind that slices and arrays are different. They are a different data type. That's an important thing to understand in Golang, uh, but I'll show you how we can actually make a slice of this array. So how we can grab some elements of it. So I'm going to say var s as standing for slice. And then what I'm going to do is put brackets. I'm going to put int and notice how I didn't put how many values I was going to take inside of these brackets. When you don't do that, what that says is this is a slice. So if I don't put the amount of elements that are going to be inside of my array, then what that means is that this item or this object will be a slice. Okay. So we said var s, which is a slice is equal to, and now I'm going to take a slice of X. So I'll put X here. I'll put the brackets where I would usually index some values here, but instead I'm going to use the slice operator. Now the slice operator I actually don't know if this is the formal name, but this is what they call it in Python. At least here is simply one colon. So if you put a colon inside of the brackets, you are denoting that you are taking a slice of this object, whatever's on the left hand side, in this case, X. Now, the basic way that this works is you can put numbers on the left and right hand side of these of this colon, and that tells you what indexes to grab from the underlying array. So in this case, if we leave it empty, we don't put any values on the left or right hand side. This means just copy the array. So it means start at the beginning and go to the end, include the end. That's what it means when we don't leave anything on the left and right hand side. In fact, if we don't leave anything on the left, that um, that means we don't put any numbers. Sorry, not don't leave anything. I don't know what I was saying there. If we don't have a value on the left hand side of this colon. What that means is start at the beginning. If we don't have a value on the right hand side of this colon, that means go to the very end. So if I put one colon here, what this is saying is start at one, go to the very end. If I put one three here, this is saying start at one, go to three, but do not include three. So that means that what I would actually grab here is the value two, three, because I would go to index three, which is the value four, but I wouldn't include it. In fact, let me just print this out to you and we'll do some examples and I'll show you really how this works. So if I print the value of S, well, go run tutorial.go, we get two, three again, because we started at one, we went to three and we didn't include three. Now let's have a look at the length and the capacity of this slice and try to take a guess at what the capacity is, um, because that's something that we were just going over. So go run tutorial.go. We get the length of this is two. So to get the length of a slice or an array for that matter, you can use the len method or len function. Sorry, simply put the object inside of len. So inside of the brackets, it will tell you how long it is. Okay. So now we're going to look at capacity. Now capacity we can get by using cap. So the capacity of S should be what? Well, let's have a look at what it actually is. And we see that we get four. So notice that the capacity is different than the length. And that's because if we look at where we started at one, so that would be right here, value two, there is four elements that we could possibly have in our slice. So you're like, well, what's the point of having the capacity? Why do we need that? Well, that's because we can actually re-slice our slice. Now this is going to seem weird, but what I can do is put S colon. Uh, so inside of here, colon, and then put capacity of S like that. And what this will do is extend our slice so that it is the full length of this array. So it starts at whatever this element is, and then it just extends and gets all the other elements that were in there. So in the capacity in the underlying array. So doing this extends the array um, and adds on those other elements. So let's look at this. Let's go go run tutorial.go and we get two, three, four, five. So we've successfully re-sliced our slice and extended it. So of course we can take slices of slices, right? If I print out slice starting at two colon, let's actually see what we get. So index two, I think will actually crash. Let me just start at index one and let's see what this does for us. 
So if we do index one, we see we just get the value three. So we successfully sliced our slice that made a new slice um, that still has the pointer to the underlying array of X here, but it's just at a different position, right? And that's the basics of how slices work and how you can take these slices. Now I'll show you how we can make our slices from the get go. So rather than having to have an array like this, maybe we want to make a slice, maybe we want to add stuff to a slice. There's a lot more things that we need to go over still. So let's actually make a slice. So we can do this a few different ways. I'll show you the um, exact, like, I guess, explicit way first and then the implicit way after. So let's say var a, let's put brackets int and notice that you can do a slice of strings. You can do a slices of like a slice of slice. If you wanted to, um, whatever you want, you can do a slice of pretty well anything, uh, but let's do a slice of int and that's equal to slice of int literal, which means now I can just type the values that I want inside of here. Now it doesn't matter how many values I have. Cause again, the slice, um, when we do it like this, it doesn't have a predefined amount of things that are inside of it. So this has successfully created a slice of ints, and these are the values that will be in the slice. Now, the way this actually works is it will create an array first that is of size, whatever the amount of elements are that we put in here. Then it will just simply have a slice that slices the entire array. So it's kind of like cheating a little bit when you do this, you're making a slice to start, but really what's happening first is you're making an integer array in this instance that will have this many elements inside of it. So that will be the capacity and the length of it. And then your slice is just that entire thing. So that's how that works. So I can actually prove that to you. If I go fmt.println and I'll print to you the capacity of A, and you'll notice that it will be the same size as um, the amount of elements that we put here. So if we go ahead and we look at this, go run tutorial.go, we get a capacity of five. So if I take a right and I slice it, so we slice it up to three. So we start at the beginning and we slice the three and we look at the capacity of a. So let's do that. So the capacity of that new slice, we get the capacity is still five, right? Because it's pointing to that underlying array that it created when it started. Okay. So that's how we make the slice. Now I'm going to show you how we can add elements to a slice, which is pretty useful. So what actually happens is um, we can't truly um, increase the size of a slice. What we can do is make a new slice that has the same values, but increased. So there's a function called append. And what the append function takes is a slice as the first argument, and then an element that we want to add to the slice as the next. So in this case, I'll add that I want to put the value 10 into my slice. And what this actually does is return a new slice that is this slice kind of plus this slice. So append means add to the end. So what would it would look like is this. So we'd add 10 to the end of that slice. So let's actually have a look at what this is. So I'm going to say B colon equals append a comma 10, because this returns a new slice. So I need to store it in a variable, which I'm going to do here. And I'll say FMT dot print line B. So let's look at what B is. And we get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we appended that element to this slice. So we couldn't truly extend the slice. Uh, we couldn't change a, but what I could do is say a equals append a 10. What that will do is say a is equal to a new slice, which is the original a plus the appended 10. So that's a common way to do this too. If you want to have the same variable name um, being extended, that works fine. But we, of course, since this returns a new slice, we can assign it anywhere we'd like. So that's append. And those are the few different ways that you make slices. Now we'll be dealing more with slices as we go through this tutorial series. The last thing I want to show you is how we can make slices with the keyword make or with the function make. Now we're going to use make a lot, um, especially when we get into concurrency, but there's something called make. So I can do something like a colon equals make. And then what I do is I put the type that I want to make. So in this case, I want to make a slice of ints and the size or the capacity that I want it to be. So if I do this and then we go FMT dot print line a, let's have a look at what we get. Go run tutorial dot go. We get all zeroed out in int array or sorry, not int array in slice of size five. So we can do many things with make. We'll see this more in the future, but I just wanted to show this to you because this is a way that you can make a new slice as well, rather than just typing it out. If you wanted to make a slice that's empty, but a certain size or length to start, then you can simply just put int and then put five like that. And it will make that for you. Now, in fact, let's actually just look at what the type is of this. So let's go percent capital T colon a and have a look at what this is. 
oops, go run tutorial.go. And we get a type int, right? So I know this is not a very descriptive type, but this is telling you this is a slice, not an array. Because if this was an array, it would have a five inside of the square brackets uh, before int. Okay, so I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. This has been pretty much everything you really need to know about slices, at least for now. We'll be using slices in a lot of examples and things in the future. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next tutorial.